What's up, other truckers? You are now watching the Asian My Show live. What's going on, other truckers? Welcome to the Asian My Show live today. We got a special guest, DIY Semi. How are you doing today, sir? I'm I'm awesome, man. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. This is great. Hey, you know, that's what we do, man. We <laughs> we help each other out. But honestly, today we on the Asia My Show are taking advantage of you because if people do <laughs> not know, DIY Semi is a very humble man. He has over 20 plus years of trucking experience, owns a trucking business. So if you don't get the chance, uh, the opportunity to watch this live, you're definitely going to watch this on the replay. And for anyone that's jumping in, whenever they do jump in, we will answer questions at the very end. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, brother. Well, I am uh, uh, started driving back in the, the late 90s as a company driver. Did that for a few years. I kind of came up, you know, on a farm, grew up on a farm. So kind of have some of that background. And uh, six or so years into it, I decided to become an owner operator, did a brief stint and then jumped back to the company side. and and. Uh, now we're back at it again uh, for about uh, 15 years and uh, just decided about a year ago, you know, it's time to, uh, we all, we all have things in this industry. We don't like, we want to change. Right. Things are getting crazy. So it's like, well, time to do your part, you know? So decided to about a year and three months ago, decided to start this YouTube thing and uh, kind of break it down, you know, my experiences and, and everything I've learned. Um, for everybody coming into the industry and people that have been here a while, uh, kind of how to, you know, we're also focused on making as much money as we can. And I got to get out and kill it and make all this money. But I think people kind of lose sight of the other side of it when it comes to like saving money and keeping mm. more of that money in your pocket, and running a, a more efficient business. So try to build a channel here that uh, from top to bottom in the trucking industry, doing things yourself. Every, you know, starting with maintenance, uh, getting control of your own fuel costs, fuel discounts, different taxes, uh, all things to do with every aspect of the trucking business um, from top to bottom, basically. And uh, we're just, you know, a year into this, we're just, uh, I feel, only getting started. We got a long ways to go. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of why why we're doing this here. And it's kind of what I hope to accomplish is to uh, to share out some of that knowledge. You know, I obviously don't know everything. I see. That's what I love about you. 20 years plus in the game, <laughs> have your own trucking business, and you still say you don't know everything. So for all oh, of no. you other truckers out there that have been doing this for three years and think you know it all, there is a reason why you are failing because we are learning every single day. Right, brother? <laughs> oh, man. I tell you what, you know, if, if, Back when I started doing this, YouTube didn't really even exist or it wasn't a thing. If, if I had the tools back then of, mm. of what people have now and what's available and out there now, I can't even imagine, um, you know, just the resources, even just like GPS and stuff, man. I remember back in the day, just, <laughs> oh my God, well, you probably remember just getting lost and just being a wreck and, yeah. you know, it's like <laughs> you have all these resources today and, and, uh, so, you know, we decided there's all these problems. Well, we want to fix them. Well, who's going to go first? You know, I'm like, well, I guess let's go. Let's do it, you know, and uh, see if we can't solve some of these problems in the industry. No, I love that. I love that. So if you guys get an opportunity, I did uh, pin our guest uh, YouTube channel, uh, DIY Semi, in there. So if you guys get an opportunity, please subscribe because I'm telling you right now and I'm going to be honest with you. I do not know anything about a truck. Okay. I, I'm not embarrassed of it. I, yes, I, I might as well be one of those millennium drivers, but I, I can't fix nothing. And I'm always looking up for how to's. So if you're looking for any how to's, go on DIY Semi and you're going to find it there. So here's the big question. Let's jump into this right away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how can new owner operators save money off the bat? Because just like you just said, we always are thinking about how we can make more money in our bank, but we're not Absolutely. thinking of the things that we're, we're not saving the money that we might be throwing away. Right, brother. <clears throat> Absolutely. So let's start with the premise of why, why we need to save money. Well, if you own a truck or you're thinking about owning a truck, well, especially if you already own one, you know, you know how crazy things are getting with shop rates that a hundred and up to $190 an hour. 
And then the thing that drives me nuts is the automatic tack on of environmental fees, shop supplies, you know, the miscellaneous is gets to be a hundred dollars. And, mm. you know, it's like, okay, you charge me $190 an hour. What the heck does that include? You know, I think mean, some things should be included here. So it's like, okay, we got to learn how to cut some of those costs. Mm. And, you know, regardless of your level of comfort, you know, there's, there's something that everybody can do. You, you know, if you have, you're starting from nothing or starting from nowhere, you, mm. you, you start with some confidence builders, you know, it's like, okay, watch some videos online. Okay. Here's how you, I mean, silly as it may sound, I see people do it all the time, put their sh- truck in the shop at the truck stop for wiper blades. Um, okay. Well, we, we gotta be doing that, you know, um, build up to, you know, changing filters. Like here's a, here's a video on the screen. You know, we, we go through a whole, how to do a PM service. Uh, I do a PM service on my truck, oil change, greasing it, changing the filters, all the different checks we need to do. Mm. Uh, you know, I had a guy tell me, you know, he, he watched it. He's like, okay, you know, I'm going to save $150 every time I do this myself over a year. That's $1,800. Well, Ooh, that's okay. a nice little vacation right there, right? <laughs> well, yeah. And and where I like to go with that, because it's, it's I'm obsessive with these things is okay to $1,800. And I'm going to put that in my IRA and you know, what's that going to turn into in 20 years, you know, or, you know, you pay off your truck early or how many tanks of fuel is that just by doing, you know, do it twice and that's a tank of fuel for yourself, mm. you know, free tank of fuel. There's so many little things like this we can do uh, and jump into, build your confidence, build up your tool supply. Nobody's going to jump into this all at once. I mean, you can spend an infinite amount of money on on tools and stuff like that. Um, and uh, not now, saying it's really basic though. I mean, like I have, I know how to change <laughs> oil in a car, but I mean, if I watch your videos, uh, will I learn how to do an oil change that quickly? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same thing as on a car. It's just bigger. You know, it's going to make, it's going to make a little bigger mess. If you miss the drain pan, you're going to mm. dump about, you know, a couple <laughs> of gallons of oil in your face, but right. no, it's, it's really, it is like that. And when I do these videos, I try to put it on a really basic level and people say, well, you know, you need to edit this down more. You need to, uh, this is boring. I'm like, well, do you want to know how to do it? Or you want me to just, you know, skip over things? If, if right. you want to know how to do it, you want to know how to do every little thing, you know, that's right. It's, it's worth doing right. You know, and with this, even just with this oil change video, and I explain, you know, it's, uh, it's not just doing it cheaper. It's sometimes you can do things better by doing them yourself. Uh, sad fact of the matter, we've all probably, you know, stood there and watched people work on our equipment and like, come on, man, you know, I'm paying you a lot of money. Let's not cut corners here. So you're doing it yourself. You're not going to cut all those corners. I hear that brother. I hear that because I've, I've gone to a shop and they're charging 500 bucks for an oil change. Cause how much is everything right here tra- costing you to do it yourself? I mean, I buy my stuff on sale. I just, you know, I went to black Friday sale two days ago and they had oil for eight ninety nine a gallon. Well, mm. I'm like, okay, I'll take a hundred gallons or I'll take 50 gallons, you know, a year's worth of oil. Right. So now you're talking $90 for the oil, maybe another $50 for filters, $60. I mean, 150, 160. Hundred, throw a couple tubes of grease in there. Hundred and seventy dollars versus, you know, three hundred and fifty or four hundred dollars at a, you know, Every wherever time. you're going to go. Yeah, it's, uh, and that's just and that's just one thing. I mean, once you start building confidence, you know, s- s- learn how to take your dash apart. You know, find a video, or whatever, and uh, there's a lot of stuff in your dash that's going to need to repair over the years. You're not going to, you know, start with things where you're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to hurt anything by taking your dashboard apart. Um, you know, and then they'll build your confidence. Okay. I know how to do this now. So, uh, we'll move on to something else. Oh, here's, yeah. And here's another one. Like, uh, you want to put a new seat in your truck, you know, you go to a dealer, they're going to charge you, you know, the cost of the seat and then, you know, three, $400 probably for labor. And it's really not too hard of a job. Um, you know, it unbolt the old one. And uh, fight with it, get it out the door, and hopefully don't give yourself a hernia, and then put the new one in, <laughs> basically. And you start, you know, we have basic videos. Here's the thing about working on your own truck. It's it's uh, it's like, uh, where, was it, where was I going with this? 
<laughs> I forgot. We'll come back to that. Uh, yeah, it's it's not too bad of a job. And but it, it does. Save a lot does of it money. really cost four hundred bucks for the labor, and it's just like three bolts or what? It depends on where you go. I mean, a dealership is gonna gonna charge you a lot of money, whereas you know an independent shop might be two hundred bucks. You gotta remember, an hour labor is you know one hundred and eighty bucks, one hundred and ninety bucks. So yeah, I mean they're gonna get you for book time or whatever, and it's it's gonna be all they can, you know. Yeah, no, I got you. So I mean, honestly, by just doing easy stuff, changing out your fuses, changing out your lights, uh, changing out your seat, um, doing your own PM oil changes. We're talking about, you know, you could be saving five, $6,000 a year easily, right? Well, you build up to it. Here's some things you're going to save big money on. Okay. Air conditioning. Now mm. on, on, on my videos, I have some very basic things and that's intentional because it's the little things that save you a lot of money. But then we kind of work up. Uh, so I have a video just explaining how your air conditioning works. Okay. Once you understand how things work, you can start to figure them out in your head. You're, you're, everybody mm. has air conditioning problems, you know, especially if you own a freight liner, you got, air <laughs> you got air conditioning problems every year when you go to, you know, use that thing. So it, you can save a, an air conditioning work is very expensive. You'll save thousands of dollars, um, by, uh, it happened to me. I, yeah. I paid uh twenty seven hundred dollars. Yeah, I on, paid on a AC work. <laughs> I paid three thousand dollars one time and it worked for four days and quit again. So it's wow. uh, it's that's what inspired me to get get a lot of my own air conditioning tools, start doing that. And uh it was worth every it's never worked as well since I started doing it myself. It's, really? What's yeah. the price point, uh, brother, on uh, doing it yourself? Uh, so they charge you three thousand dollars for a new AC. If you know what you're doing, how much is that costing you, honestly? I replaced the whole thing, my, my whole AC system, lines, compressor, condenser, everything, right. the whole system for about fifteen hundred dollars. And if they replaced that whole system, it would be like more than five thousand. Wow. Wow. And you know what? I'll be honest. In the last two years, my AC has gone out twice and I've spent over $6,000. Uh, yeah. It's happened to me, man. So where the hell was your channel? You know what I'm <laughs> <saying>? <laughs> Yeah. And, and the tools to do that are you need a vacuum pump and you know, with a set of gauges. And I mean, that's about it. Uh, there's, there's only one thing legally that you can't do and that's vacuum the system out. But chances are, if your air conditioning isn't working, something's broken where you already lost your refrigerant anyways. So mm. it's not that big a deal, but, um, yeah, I mean, there's, it's, it's insane, you know, like that, the amount of money you can save with, uh, things like that. And, and, you know, we have, and then we move on up to, you know, I have a couple of videos about replacing your fan clutch. Um, that's something that's quite expensive to get done at a shop level. Um, you know, things like that. Another, another huge video that seems to do really well is people have problems with their engine fan, not shutting off and can't figure out why so through the whole you take it to a shop and they're going to spend all this time troubleshooting it and then probably hook it up to a computer and do whatever but you know i'll show you how to go through the whole troubleshooting process yourself you're going to do the same things that they're going to do and probably catch the problem before uh, you even have to take it somewhere and, and be able to fix it you know if you go through that troubleshooting process and don't find it okay then it's time to get it to get it hooked up to a computer. Now, Something. do you, uh, do you have the computer at your house, the diagnostics to do that or you no, show I people don't. ways without it? No, I, it, once you get to that level, that, that software is like really expensive. It's dealer level software. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, I have one truck, so it's not really worth it, but I have to be honest. I, I actually have the, uh, uh, everything. So I have, the really? diagnostic. yeah, yeah. Because nice. me and my partner have a dealership. Oh yeah, that's right. That's so, right. you know, uh, you know, we just hook up the, was it called the, the pro? Yeah. You know, and then, uh, we just, uh, um, we hook it up and we could check it out right away. Cause that's what we do before we buy the trucks. Uh, we just, we just hook the damn thing up and, and see if there's any fault codes. If there's not, then we buy the truck, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah. That's the way to do it. There's, there's basic tools, readers. You can get like that just to see it, if there's fault codes and clear the faults, but 
I was talking about like the, you know, if you have a Cummins, it's called the Cummins Insight software. It's like $4,000 or something like that. Oh, but, no, yeah, we don't have that. We have the generic shit that TA has. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's good enough, man. You know, most, you know, everybody's like, well, I can't afford all these tools. You know, what do I need for tools? Well, I'll be honest with you. I get most of my tools at Harbor Freight. Not a, not a daily mechanic, you know, working right. on trucks every day. These tools will do just fine. Mm. Uh, you know, you, and that's the thing too. Well, like what, what I need for tools? Well, wait till a Black Friday or a holiday sale. Go to Harbor Freight, spend a couple hundred dollars on a basic set of wrenches, set of screwdrivers, pliers. Uh, really nice to get yourself an impact gun and you're off to the races. You know, if changing your shocks by yourself, you, you go around your truck and change all your shocks by yourself. It's a really simple job. The amount of money you're going to save in labor will more than pay for that impact gun just doing it once. And then, you know, the rest is is just gravy after that. I use mine all the time. No, that's you know? awesome, brother. No, that's awesome. So for people that are watching this right now or just hopping in right now, we're here with DIY Semi today. He does have a YouTube channel as well. 20 years experience in the game, has his own trucking business. And he's here just telling us instead of just how to make money, how to save that money as well. And some of the stuff you need to do is you need to start learning how to work on your own truck. And I am that person as well. Um, regu regulated freight lines. Uh, send a super chat. You know, we do Q and a at the very end, but I got to respect this man. Uh, great content question for you and your guests. What's your opinion on incorporating diesel treat box, a DF and full synthetic oil to preserve your truck as far as maintenance. Thank you. So what are your thoughts about that stuff? All right. Diesel treat. Here's the thing with additives. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a. Uh... It's a touchy the Lucas, subject. Baby. The Lucas. <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, well, okay. So you get it. They have a, a lot of them have very much a cult following. I mean, it's like, yeah, you, you can't, you know, convince somebody against their will if, if something's bad, but they love it. So it's like, right. Right. If you're going to use a diesel additive, be able to measure that it works, mm. you know, do extensive testing with it, with, without it. And then with it. And if you show that it works and the savings overcome the cost of the product, well, then absolutely it makes sense. And if you feel that the diesel treat is working for you, then, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. That's for sure. Right. Uh, the box DEF, I like that. The The price is high. I mean, that's... Can that's you explain what that is? So if, uh, people that are watching, they might be new. They might not know what that is. Yeah, yeah well. like on your newer trucks with emissions, you can buy the DEF at the pump or you can buy it in the truck stop in a box. Um the box stuff, the stuff at the pump is, you know, in the high $2 a gallon. And mm -hmm. in the box, you're going to pay 20 some dollars for probably, I think it's like a two and a half gallon uh, box. So it's, it's significantly more expensive, but they claim that it's cleaner and you're going to have less problems. Whether what are your that, real thoughts? It's hard to prove. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's not sitting out there in the elements and, and in the cold. And you can see those pump handles, they crystallize with all the white crystallization around there. That's no good for your DEF pump, obviously. It's not good for your system. So, yeah, it would it would make sense. But doggone, it's a real expensive way to buy DEF. Um, so you don't recommend? Personal choice, honestly. Personal choice. Um, I probably wouldn't unless I could get a really good price on it. Um, what I would probably do is buy it in bulk at home, maybe in a 50 gallon drum and keep some in my side box or, or whatever, uh, might be how I do it. Um, but it's, it's all personal preference on what you want to do. That sounds like a, a very safe answer DIY. So tell me what you really feel. So what are your thoughts about these damn Lucas I'm, and all that? You like okay. it? You don't like it? My real thoughts on the DEF is I'm too damn cheap to pay $30 a box for it when I can uh, buy it at the pump for a couple of bucks. So gotcha. <laughs> additives. Okay. Additives. I have a couple of videos on testing some additives. I was new. They're not great videos, whatever, but they're real. It's real. So most additives are not saying they're snake oil, but they just don't most, a lot of them work, but they don't overcome the cost of the product. The product is so expensive. You can't reap enough benefit to even cover the cost of the product, much less the savings. Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. So there's only a, a, a couple that I like. I don't promote them maybe someday in the future. Um, right. It's stuff you've never heard of. And that's a lot of times, some of the times what the, what the best stuff is, is things you've never heard of. So what I is don't, that stuff? promote it uh, here let us know brother Shoot. all right well the fuel additive is called fuel ox 
uh, it's fuelox.com. I've been using it for better than two years. I'm very happy with it. I got a couple other people on it. They love it, uh, especially in their emissions trucks. They seem to regen a lot less. And uh, the oil added, the only oil additive I'll use is called No More Friction. Um, I uh, I have a real grudge against Lucas. I've done <laughs> hand, hands-on testing with it, and uh, in my opinion, it can possibly, you know, even maybe do more harm than good. It's my opinion, just from the the hands-on testing that I've done. But they have a very loyal following, so. Uh, I hear you. <laughs> we'll leave it alone for now. We'll leave it alone for now. So, yeah. you know, uh, moving forward, uh, DIY. Um, so a lot of people uh, that are jumping in right now, uh, watch the replay if you didn't see it, but we're just showing you a couple examples of how you can save money and which is important by just doing your own work, basic stuff, oil changes, uh, changing your chair, uh, fuses, right? And learning to get to the heavier stuff like changing your AC, which I need to learn how to do because my AC keeps on breaking every damn year, especially when I get into Houston in the summertime. I don't know yeah. what it is, but that's when it likes to break down. And so, you know, what is another way that people can save money? And I know we said something about cost per mile because a lot of people might not really understand that. And maybe uh, we talked offline and you said that uh, you have a little equation that might help people, right? Well, yeah, we talk about, you know, a lot about business side of trucking too. We try to cover every aspect. And it's kind of one of the things I feel people don't concentrate on enough is cost per mile and, and actually knowing your cost per mile. When you ask somebody, what's your cost per mile? Oh, it's it's about a dollar fifteen dollar twenty five. Well, no, your cost per mile is this number. It's 99 cents. What It is what it is. But you have to know that because people talk about all the time about cheap freight. Don't haul cheap freight. Right. Well, what is cheap freight? How do you know what cheap freight is if you don't know what, even know what it takes to cost you to, what it costs you to operate? Mm. So I stress that a lot. I guess in this video here, I show a real simple, easy record keeping system. And then, uh, you know, it also helps you uh, keep track for your taxes and everything and what to do with those numbers. I put them in a spreadsheet. It gives me my cost per mile on, I think, eight different categories and then the total cost per mile. Here I bust out the old adding machine. See, I told you I was a dinosaur. I don't, <laughs> I don't have too much computers here. That's old school adding no, machine that's great. right there. No, Some that's people great. have never even seen one. But uh, knowing your cost per mile is one of the most important things in this business. It's like, you know, do you think that... Uh, Johnson and Johnson would pump out millions of gallons of baby shampoo a year and not, not know what it costs them to make it, you know, how would they know what to charge? So we kind of got to, you know, think the same way on these things. So and, break uh, it down for me, baby. Break it down for me. Uh, right. uh, if people are taking notes right now. This is the time, uh, whip out your notebooks or whatnot. If you're driving, then take mental notes, um, whip it out something basic for people because it gets very confusing for a lot of people. Well, take, okay, uh, maintenance is a category, for example. Say you want to reduce your cost per mile for maintenance. First, you got to know what your, your cost per mile is. Let's say it's like for maintenance, it's 12 cents a mile, all miles. And we're talking oil changes, uh, tires, everything you do for maintenance. Okay, so now we know this number, our cost per mile. Now we look at ways to reduce that cost per mile. So how do we do that? Well, we educate ourselves about tires, rolling resistance, um, finding the best prices we can on tires, getting good tire discounts brings our cost per mile down mm. on tires. You know, rolling resistance is a big deal for fuel economy. So then we kind of got it in two categories there. We brought down our cost on the tires and fuel economy. You, you need to bring down your, your cost per mile on maintenance. We can start looking at like bypass oil filtration to where you don't need to change your oil per often or as often switching to synthetic oil running that oil longer, uh, in turn, getting, you know, better results out of the oil, maybe fuel economy, uh, better lifespan on components. And that in turn also brings down our cost per mile. It's pennies, but the pennies turn into dollars and that's what you got left, you know, for yourself at the end of the year. That's, that's what it's all about. You can, I like that. You, can you can improve your situation probably more through monitoring and working on your cost per mile, mm -hmm. then you can going out and trying to get another, you know, 10 cents a mile out of this load, because let's face it. I mean, you can only make so much money. You only got so many hours of work in a week. 
Right. People are only going to pay you so much. Just because you want $5,000 on every load doesn't mean you're going to get it. They're only going to pay you what they can pay you. But you can right. always work on your costs. It's the only thing you can really control. You can't control the freight markets. You can only take advantage of them when they're there, when they're hot. But you can mm. always work on the part that you can control, which is your numbers. Mm, I like that. I you like know, that. And, that. Uh, a big one I noticed, too, is uh, when I start... When I started to make my own food, simple things, you know, change yeah. my phone plan. Yeah. I stopped buying Chinese cheap tires. I started <laughs> buying some yeah. freaking Michelin tires. Yeah. Yes, it's more expensive. But in the long run, you find yourself not having problems. And that's one thing I learned and I did wrong. And I'll tell you this right now, okay. DIY. I put Chinese steer tires on mm. my truck. And they popped. And oh, guess no. what? If anyone knows, steer tires, you only got two tires, one on each side. So when they <laughs> pop, that's super dangerous. And now I'm stuck on the side of the road. God forbid you kill somebody. Next thing you know, you only break down when there's nothing around but uh, some, yeah. you know, Joe Blow truck stop that, you know, no one goes to. <laughs> right. Well, this, I don't, I'm not trying to jump ahead and we'll definitely come back. But that that goes to another point that we talk about a lot. I don't hear people on YouTube talking about is risk management. Mm. Okay. You can save, say you save $50 by putting on a Chinese steer tire. What are you risking? You're risking exactly what you just pointed out. So what did you really save? You know, mm. it's like, all right, super singles. A lot of people like them. Okay. I'm in a different situation. I have my own authority, right? I have to provide the best service I can possibly provide. That means I can't be sitting on the side of the road with a flat tire. You know, if mm. I run duels, I can most times limp it to where I need to go, even though, yes, it's not quite what you're supposed to do. I get that. But what I'm supposed to do is what I agreed to do, and that's deliver freight on time mm. for the price I agreed to do it. Mm. And every time, that's all I have is service. So I don't want to risk putting myself in a situation sitting on the side of the road with a blowed super single right. when I could be possibly still making that delivery. Is it going to cost me more? Yeah, a, a few cents here and there by the end of the year. but it's, it's a risk sometimes you got to take and you got to, you got to weigh that out, you know, for your business. No, I hear you. Cause, uh, on the, on the wholesale buying side, every time I see a bunch of trucks, uh, me and my partner, were going to buy some freight liners. We were going to buy like 25 of them. They were like 2017s going for only like 29,000, but they all have super singles on them. Right. And you have to think twice that, you know what? It sounds great and all. But what owner operator is going to buy that truck and not have a place to actually, because you got to know what you're doing to put on super singles. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's different. So you yeah. got, you know, you get what you pay for sometimes. Yeah. And, and if, so I get if that. If you're leased to a carrier. Yeah. It's not a big a deal because you blow the tire. All you do is pick up the phone. Hey, I blew a tire. You need to do something for me. Reschedule this load. But yeah, I'm on my own. I, you know, it's, right. it's for me to handle. So yeah, it's, it all, we talk about all these different categories. They all kind of in a roundabout way mm. come back to each other, you know, by at the end of the day, I, I did skip something on that person's question. I apologize. You asked about synthetic oil, big fan of synthetic oil. It's better, uh, especially in the winter time. If I'm not running it in the summer, I always switch to it in the winter, uh, better mm. cold starts, uh, better performance, better lifespan, things like that. So I apologize for skipping that. No, no, thank you. No, uh, DIY. So here's the big question, brother. Okay. Yeah. Here's the big question. I know you got a whole bunch of YouTube videos, but half the time my subscribers might not know what they're doing. Is there a hotline email that they could <laughs> email and call you and say, hey, I am on the I-10 or I'm on the I-40. I'm at, you know, 29 marker and my, my, my belt is messed up and I'm watching your YouTube video trying to fix my belt, but I don't know what I'm doing, right? Uh, I, I know you might not have the time, but... If yeah. people email you, uh, you think you might be able to help them out because I think a lot of subscribers here can save a lot of money if they just had someone, not a mentor, but just someone that had their best interests, not always ripping them, right? Yeah, I, and stuff. I talk to people all the time. Um, I'll give you an email, uh, DIYSemi at yahoo.com. Let me write it's, that in there. Uh, dirty broke, dirty broke, cash is king. I got my moderators uh, in here. Uh, go ahead, guys. Right there. That's my boys right there. You know, uh, um, yeah, yeah, DIY semi at yahoo.com. I check it all the time. Uh, is the best way to reach me. I'm going to get a 
I'm going to get a phone set up for YouTube. I think, uh, I talk to people. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to fake call you one time and I'm <laughs> going to use a weird voice. I'm like, excuse me, sir. I am just stuck on the side of the road. Can you help me? And if you don't pick up, I'm going to know. No, I'm just... <laughs> oh, Hey, Hey, now I can prove to you. So if you go to one of my recent videos, like last week, I met with huh? a subscriber in a truck stop and we changed the airbag on his truck. He called me. He says, I'm, hey. I'm at, I'm at Walmart. You know, I got, I just got an airbag leak. And I says, well, is it drivable? He's like, yeah. So I said, stop at international, pick one up. We met, we popped a new airbag on his truck for Word him. And there we go. What, what, you don't have to tell me your exact address because people are going to start going on your door bit. How close, <laughs> how close do uh, my subscribers got to be to your house for you to drive out there? Because I'll pay for that at that. Oh point, man. You know I, don't I, mean? know. I don't know. <laughs> we got to be meeting up on the road. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I no, that's, that's the kind of, you know, he saved a couple hundred dollars. Here's the thing too, when it comes to that, you know, little things, I understand people don't want to work on their truck, but here's the thing. You go into the TA, mm -hmm. you say how long to get an airbag done mm. and you look in the shop and their shop is empty and they say, what well, about nine hours? And you're like, mm. but your shop is empty. What the hell? Well, we don't have a technician here right now. I'm like, well, there's six of you standing behind the counter. Well, none of us mm. are trained how to do that. I'm like, all right. You know, that's the thing. You want to wait nine hours to have an airbag done when you can, I'll just show you how we literally did it in like 15 minutes, you know? Are you serious? Because these guys yeah. be making me wait all day sometimes, brother. Yeah. All no, day it's sometimes. Like, no, it's it's some of these things that they're not as, as complicated as they seem. So, you know, we 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 help each other, you know. Now he can go help somebody else and and that's what it is, you know, we just keep helping each other. No, okay, no, well, thank you. So let's let's segue this a little bit if you don't mind DIY. Yeah. So uh, for people watching again, we're here with DIY uh, Semi. He has a YouTube channel. I have it pinned in when you jump on for the hundred plus people that are watching right now. Um, here's the thing: if you can, you know, save money by working on your own stuff. I'm feeling more confident just talking to you, DIY, <laughs> because I don't know how to do anything, and now I got to start making videos. I'm gonna say, hey. I'm watching a DIY video of how to change uh, my my AC, and hopefully, you know, I'll be so ecstatic if I am able to do it right. And I'm sure I will with your videos. Now, besides saving on working on your own things, we talked off camera again about other ways to save, and how a lot of people use these services to do all their paperwork and, and oh, yeah. permits they need. And so, you know, I I see here that you have a video. And this is important because everyone that's an owner operator that what that has over fifty thousand gross weight is that correct has yeah. to file yeah. a twenty two ninety highway use tax. And I have people doing this for myself as well. And you walk people through this. Can we actually talk about maybe some of the permits starting with this one? That yeah, absolutely. You know, you can um, do yourself. Permit companies are going to hate me. They're probably going to try to get my channel thrown off of YouTube because I'm giving it all away for free. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I, I got a nasty comment from one one time. I'm like, well, you really? know, then charge a reasonable rate. This this form right here doesn't need. You don't need to pay hundred and fifty dollars to have somebody do this for you. I mean, it literally. I don't know how long the video is here, but you know, when you're doing it yourself, it's like fifteen minutes. You know, mm. it's just you got to know how to put the numbers in and stuff, and. uh, it's five hundred and fifty dollars a year for the well, depending on your on your truck, your weight class. But most of us over the road guys, it's going to be five fifty a year, mm. and you just hammer it out yourself here and and send it out. That's all they do. I mean, they do the some of them do it online, whatever. Uh, you do whatever way you want. Uh, but yeah, it's a simple form, and then we go through like UCR. Uh, all your different w states like Kentucky, New York, Oregon, New Mexico, where you have these weight distance taxes. Right. We show how to fill all them forms out. Um, I haven't gotten to Arkansas's yearly tax yet. I haven't gotten that in the mail. But it's like, uh, you know, to outsource all this stuff, it adds up. You know, uh, some people get upset with their carrier. Well, you're taking this 20% out of my settlement for nothing. All you got is a phone and a computer and you just call around. It's like, it's not true. They do a lot of things that you don't know about. Mm. Um, and this is, you know, these things are one of them, all these taxes and stuff, but, um, it all adds up really. And it, it can be, you know, hundreds of dollars a year that you can just keep in your pocket.
No, so, I hear you. Do you show people on your uh, your channel as well how to fill out and get their authority, MC number, all these things? Because people pay five, six hundred dollars for these services. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that. Um, I just did a video yesterday about you know kind of the downsides of getting your own authority because I feel like some people are taking it kind of flippantly right now. Uh, just because of the good rates, but there's a wall behind me here. I just got a new desk and I got a big whiteboard coming for behind me. We're going to go all goodwill hunting on your ass. The, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like love it. Math man. all over the place, but uh, I wanted to have, be able to, when I do something like that, I, I like to get into the details and cover everything because you're not doing anybody any favors uh, if you're missing something. So we're definitely going to do that to the authority, um, the different permits you need, insurance. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's in the works. No, I love it. I love it because right here on DIY, he's showing you how to do your IFTA if you need to. He's showing you how to yeah. uh, just do everything that people are paying. See, people put together a package, and maybe that's something you and I could work on together where we could put together a free package. All yeah. right. Yeah. And and all people got to do is subscribe to, you know, DIY. And, uh, you know, I will, if you guys subscribe to DIY, we're going to, him and I can work together, put together a free package for you guys so that you don't have to use any services and you can find out how you can get your MC number, all these things. They're all public. I mean, it's Absolutely. on the FM CSA, but there are a couple things where if you put a comma in the wrong place or you're trying to get your LLC and you, 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 you're trying to get your EIN number and you, you're doing the wrong things a little bit wrong, it could send you back a couple of weeks. And it's happened to me yeah. before as well. But maybe that's something off camera you, you and I and uh, maybe a couple guys can work with. And yeah. then that could be a package we could, you know, give away for people just for free, you know? Yeah, I say that all the time. Uh, it's funny you mention that. When, you, when you're dealing with the government, you turn square corners. You mm. make sure your punctuation is right. You know, I like that. Uh, you make sure every column has an entry that needs to. You don't miss anything because they're not going to put you in jail. They're just going to send it back and then you're going to redo it. And then it's going to take more weeks. You just take the time and you do it meticulously. So you say, I watched your 2290 video. It's boring. Yeah, right. It's damn, it's damn sure right. Hey, you know? hey, I love the confidence. I love the confidence. <laughs> that's, and that's what it is, too. And so, yeah, you know, uh, I'm hoping that you and I could jump on and, and do more things like this. So, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, before we do a little bit of Q&A, yeah. uh, is there anything that you want people to know kind of to wrap up this training session that we're doing so that uh, people could get the information they need? And let me jump on to your channel and so that while you're talking as well i can highlight you because that's the least i could do i thank you so much oh, brother thank you. yeah um on. i would just say you know measure not everything is worth doing yourself obviously time is valuable too you gotta have time with your family you gotta have time for whatever um start small start simple build up your confidence and are we ever gonna do an overhaul in my driveway probably not because mm my skill set is probably not good enough to do that. And that's something that's going to happen once every five to 10 years, you're going to have air conditioning go out all the time. You're going to have your blower motor go out. You're going to have all these, li the little things are what add up. These little things are not hard to do, but they're time consuming. So to put it in a shop and, and pay them for that time at 190 bucks an hour, when you could be saving that money, and and learning how to do it for yourself that's the thing the little things matter the big things we'll leave that to a you know there's i'm not going to do an overhaul like the guy over at the caterpillar dealer that does it every single day that's a 40 to fifty thousand dollar motor i want him doing that mm. okay i'll worry about you know the little stuff and uh that's the difference you know and it, it can make the difference in in your success sometimes I love it. I love it. I love it. So everybody, everybody, you know, the hundred people on or whatnot and the people watching on the replay DIY semi, I appreciate you uh, yeah, thank you for being on the show, brother. And uh, you know what, since we have you here, we will be taking uh, a couple uh, questions, a couple Q and a, and I appreciate everyone for watching the show and sticking on. And hopefully uh, you got something from this. And so let's jump into Q and a. And let's Absolutely. see what we got going on. And before that, I, I always I always jump on and let people know that um, 
let me showcase real quick our um, moderators channels because that's what I like to do. I like to do that. Uh, give me one second. Yeah. While people are writing their stuff, uh, let me go ahead and do that because our moderators, they could be doing everything and anything under the sun, but instead they're over here helping us out, making sure that we're we're keeping everything positive and, and good, you know? So mm -hmm. give me a second here. So, you know, uh, Dirty Broke, really great friend of mine. Really That's good a good guy. channel right there. Really good guy, you know? And so if you just want positivity, it, man, off camera, if you want help with the fueling business, you're always wondering why hazmat tankers make the most money. And you want to know all these things, man, my guy, Dirty Broke, he will make that happen for you. So, you know, please, you know, the 100 people that are on here now, I'm letting you know 100% fact. If you're thinking about becoming a truck driver and you want to know what pays best, straight up, straight up, owner operators, yes, okay, we know that. But for company driver side, LTL, food service, and with that, hazmat tanker. So my man here. He will talk to you off camera about that. He would help you out, man. You just have to email him, of course. But uh, Dirty Broke, thank you so much as always. And with that, let me see where uh, Cash is King is on here. And we've had Cash is King on the show as well. And uh, he's a great guy. He's letting you know a lot of things of the reefer business. And so I just want to thank Cash is King. And again, people. You think I talk about money? This man don't stop talking about money. <laughs> Everything is money on his channel. Look at it. Right. Look at it. videos, videos, reefer, owner, 6,800 a week. You know, look at these fun thumbnails right here, man. He's, you go down, he's helping you how to do job searches. He's showing you how much money he's making and he's keeping it honest, man. So that's the big thing with him. If you want to know how to get in the reefer game, be an owner operator, how to make some money, how to wear some cowboy hats. Make 7,800 revenue. He'll tell you how, baby. So thank you to my That's moderators. Right. And so let's get into some Q&A. And let's check out and see what we got going on. If there's any Q&A. If not, then that's okay. We can stop. Yep. Jump off. Just subbed to Dirty Broke. Look at that. See, that's what we're doing. We're, we're helping each other out, man. We're just sharing love and community. You know. And so let's see if there is any. Uh questions uh, trucker storm is on here as well so trucker storm real quick man this guy uh, he's going to be on the show soon so i'm going to have him on the show hopefully uh this week so a uh, trucker storm uh, has a great youtube channel i'll have him on the show hopefully i believe on friday i think is what i emailed you sir but um a lot of information good guy as well so you know i need to make him a moderator too but i'll figure that out in a second but yeah Let's see if there's any uh, questions. Trucker Beetle in the house. Man, a lot of YouTubers in here, man. A lot of people want to learn from you, DIY. A lot there of you people, go. man. Awesome. You know? I'm learning some new channels here, too. Yeah, DIY, yeah. Uh, Trucker Beetle, great guy. He, he puts up okay. some stuff, does some dash cam stuff. If you like trucking, then definitely subscribe as well. So let's get into some Q&A, guys. And I apologize yeah. if I didn't answer any questions. But write your questions down right now. Um, first one, just want to ask if my CDL license here in Hawaii is qualified in the mainland. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I would say absolutely it's qualified. Would you say so? Oh yeah, absolutely. We, we brought you on board, you know, just shortly after world war two. You're good. There we go. There's the answer. Uh Oh, here's a question. Are you going to say Freightliner? Or what are you going to say here? I'm, I, yes, yes. I mean, I, I'm I'm not loyal to any particular brand, believe it or not. Although I prefer Freightliner, but if you're asking what what truck is the easiest to work on, and you got to go with that with parts availability, um, and parts pricing, it's Freightliner. I mean, I can get, you know, I have a, a Detroit engine. Uh, parts are everywhere. Uh, parts for the Freightliner are everywhere. I get a lot of my parts at Napa. You know, uh, you can find them. You know, Kenworth and Peterbilt parts there too, but yeah, I mean, obviously a truck with a longer hood, it's easier to wedge yourself in that engine bay and work on stuff. Mm. But, you know, as, if you're talking about complexity, yeah, the newer emissions trucks are, it's it's a mess. But, you know, the older trucks, like my truck, it can jump in there and pretty much work on anything. Mm. 
So there you go. There you go. And real quick, shout out to my man, Pell Rider TV. Look, he says he needs you on his show. Oh, no problem. Anytime, connect, hit me up. Connect, connect, connect. Uh, I'll give you guys uh, Pell Rider. Uh, Pell Rider has a YouTube channel as well. He does his Friday night. This man is old school YouTube, so give me one second. I apologize. I got to stop the damn show just so I could uh, rep and let people know because it's one of those things where I've been watching Pell Rider before I started a YouTube channel. That's that's what this man means to me right here. So I don't nice. know if Pell Rider is still on or not, but uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he's been in the game a long time, and he does these Friday shows where he showcases new, 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 new uh, trucking YouTubers and, and all sorts of stuff. I, I was on his show six months ago. Nice. You know, we, we did a lot of cool stuff, you know. So, uh, please, if you get a chance, DIY, uh, jump on his show, man, because he's willing to show you some love, you know. Absolutely. There's a question. Can we go down to that question second from the bottom, then? Let's there. go sure. down to the question. Abdul? Uh, let's answer it. There you go. He wants to know, I'm waiting for my authority. Can I run intrastate for those few weeks? Well, there's only, I think there's seven states that allow intrastate transport with no uh, intrastate authority, but most states, you still need a permit and authority to run intrastate in those states. Um, here's something a lot of people don't know that if you pick up a load, say in Wisconsin, the state I'm in, if I pick up a load in Wisconsin, it also delivers in Wisconsin. Unless you have the Wisconsin intrastate authority, that's not exactly legal. And in most states, that's the case. There's what the heck is it? I think it's seven or 14 states. I can't remember that you can do that for free with no special authority, but every other state, you need that authority. And it's something that they, do they ever check it? Probably not. But if they ever did, you'd be in a, you'd, you'd be in a world of hurt. Mm, mm. And trucker storm, uh, he, he didn't get this uh, question answered earlier when we did answer it, but the additives in your feel, uh, you know? Yeah. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, like I say, don't follow it blindly. Be able to measure it. You know, keep good track of your fuel economy without using it, and then with using it, and then figure out okay, if I gained, you know, two tenths of a mile per gallon or, you know, half a tenth of a mile per gallon, what's that worth money wise? And did I even recover the cost of the product, much less exceed it to get some savings out of it? But mm. as far as like winter additives, you got to use anti gel and winter additives. It's a must. Mm, no, thank you. Thank you. Um, were to buy a 2005 pre emission truck or is it too much risk? What's your thoughts? I run my truck is a, it's a glider kit. It's a 2012, but it has a pre emissions 1999 motor in it. And if you, this is where you definitely need some kind of skill set. The truth of the matter is older trucks are going to break more often. Can you handle that? Can you, can you do the little things? If, if you have a little bit of a skill set and some mm -hmm. ambition, I think it's a great, a great plan. Um, if you're the type of person that's hands off, doesn't like to touch anything, then I would say, no, probably don't do that. Mm, mm. And I'm working on getting you a sponsor right now. This man awesome. right here says, I'm a retail product manager for Napa division. Nice plug. So, Hey, hey. I do a lot of business with Napa. I got, <laughs> Hey, I buy give my guy Napa. some free Napa stuff, man. You are the product manager. There you go. Hook Sponsor him my up, channel. Man. Keep my man alive. Keep my there man you alive. You know, um, let's see. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, is he going to run into some trouble? I have my authority, but waiting on my IFTA, can I run? Uh, no, <laughs> no, uh, no, you need that IFTA. You got to have that. When you get pulled in for a DOT inspection, they want to see your IFTA, your registration and insurance. Mm. So no, you, you need that. You might, you could call your own state. You might be able to run around your own state and not leave the state. Um, they could issue, uh, but ask them. Every state is different. And then too, you need to interest state authorities. But overall, no. I like that. I like that. Let me see. I see we're getting some mechanic questions and such. Let's see what we got here. Do you recommend running? I don't have my glasses on. Reca retreads or recaps? Is it recap? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I've done, I've done that. Um, Everybody, you know, recaps are a boogeyman. They're a very divisive topic. They're mm. not what they used to be. Recaps, the technologies in recaps are so much better than they've ever been. Um, 
just go with a good, like, I personally don't care for band eggs. I've had some issues there, but go, you know, go to your local dealer and say, Hey, do you recap? Who do you have do it? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and just get, you know, information on that. Make sure the case, I like, I'll do it if I have my own casings. I won't buy them from somebody else's casings because you never know how they were taken care of. With mine, at least I know they've not been run into, slammed into curbs and and cut all up and abused, run on low tire pressure. So I'll do it if I if I have my own casings and I'm happy with the company that's doing it. No, I love that. I love that. Um, what are your thoughts on this? I have my thoughts on this, but what are your thoughts on this, brother? What CDL school should he attend? He's thinking about prime. If we're only talking about CDL school <laughs> and right. nothing after that, the part that after that, you know, if you want to go to CDL school there, it's cool, but please don't lease purchase the truck there. Um, that's, that's one of, like, one of the biggest companies I have a problem with uh, for various reasons. It's incredibly expensive to mm. lease purchase, purchase a truck through them and most mega carriers. If you want to work there, uh, see if they'll take you on with your own truck. Go get your own truck at a good, get one from Asian Mike. Yeah. <laughs> and then put it on over there. If they won't let you come there with their own truck, that should tell you that they make money off of leasing trucks, not off of hauling freight. And that's not Ooh. in your best interest. I like that. I like that. You know, that's and... the new business model for mega carriers. Honestly, oh, yeah. everybody no. listen to that. That's how they make their money now. They will haul cheap freight because they don't care as long as you make that truck payment. I'm telling you, that's people don't know, money. but uh, every mega carrier has their own dealership. That should tell you something. And finance company. Yes, so they're getting it on you. three ends, Holland Ooh. Freight, finance, um, probably insurance too, because some of them are self-insured, mm -hmm. and then the dealership. So they're, getting, they're making four fourfold off of you. Man, you know I'm. Uh, you know what I'm thinking now, DIY, because you have 20 years of experience, man. You know, 20 plus. I might need you as a, a live moderator in here all the time because <laughs> I you don't got dirty know, broke. You don't need anything more than know, that. But you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. I don't uh, know enough about engines and I don't know enough about everything. The only thing I know is people. And so when I don't know something, I have a guest on. And since yeah. you guys see that I have a guest on every damn day, that lets you know that I don't know much. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you two things. Uh, there's some some old wisdom here. Uh, there's wisdom and a multitude of counsel, they always say. And surround yourself with people smarter than you are. That's what I try to do. And you try to do it too. We don't know everything. You got to learn. If you can't ever learn, then uh, if you're so arrogant as you can't be taught anything, mm -hmm. then I mean, what are you ever going to do really? Oh man, that's, that's good advice, brother. You know, uh, what should my man here do uh, or miss right? Should what? I get authority before purchasing sleeper? What, you mean like before purchasing it? What do you suppose that means? Uh, should I get my authority before purchasing a sleeper? So uh, basically the question is, uh, can you get your authority before actually buying a truck? Yes, and you should because you buy that truck and if you, something happens, you get denied your authority. What are you going to do with that truck? Mm. <laughs> so you could lease it on somewhere, but that didn't seem to be your goal. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get your authority. You know, you do your filings and then mm -hmm. there's a waiting period. Okay, you got to get your authority and then get primary liability insurance skip all the other insurances for now. Mm. And that's enough to activate your authority. When your authority goes active, then you bust out and you get your permits, you get all the other insurance you got. When that authority goes active, you got instantaneously a whole bunch of things to go do uh, mm. paperwork wise and stuff. And finding the truck is one of those things. Mm. Mm. Um, I need a good insurance company. What are your thoughts? Um, Progressive seems to be all the rage lately, but I'll tell you what, right now, Progressive is the most expensive insurance company out there, in my opinion. Um, I use truck riders out of, uh, are they out of Egan, Minnesota or Bloomington, mm. Minneapolis area? They've been great to me, man. Mm. Give me great rates, great service. Um, there's a Cottingham and Butler out of Iowa. There's insurance companies all over the place. Make sure you're getting good service and make sure you can do after hours online certificates mm. is a big thing now. You need to be, no, especially I, if you have your like own that. authority. I like that. And for people that don't know out there, I've done extensive research on insurance companies. There's actually only a few insurance companies that actually insure the right. commercial vehicle. So Northland, everyone else, yep. Yep. So everyone else is actually just playing the middleman. They're broker. Actually, 
they're all brokers. So uh, what you can do, uh, Jesse, is if you live, I don't know where you live, but let's give an example. You you live in uh, Houston, Texas. Then just go to a, a local Houston, Texas brokerage. And what they have to do is they have to fill out uh, a, a form to approve to be a, a progressive agent, fill out a form to be a state farm agent, fill out a form to be a, a great white agent. So at the end of the day, these brokers, they're actually agent of every company. When you call them and you say, hey, I would like some insurance, they could wear any hat possible. And half the time, a company like State Farm, they will just say, one second while we get you to our uh, customer service, and then they'll just transfer it to a broker. Yep. So a broker can get you the best rate. So that's why my man here I found a good one with his local guys, right? Yep. Yeah, so you know, just letting you guys know. Um, recap should be legal. Yeah, I hear it. Asian My sells trucks. Yeah, I have uh, me and my partner have a, a wholesale dealership, and uh, you know, uh, shout out to uh, my guy Bob right now. Um, he drove all the way down from Pennsylvania. He's buying one of our W nines today. So nice. Oh, you know, W. Oh, W nine. You sell W nines? Yeah. I'm sorry, we can't um, continue with this interview. Yeah, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> For people, for no, for just a full disclaimer, full disclaimer, uh, when a trucking company uh, upgrades their fleet or goes out of business, I call them and say, hey, guys, uh, Celadon, how many trucks do you have for sale? And they say, we have 800. How many would you like to buy? I say 800. Right. And then after that, I get my private investors and we try to make the numbers work. We go there. And we hook up every damn truck and see if it's okay, this and that. And then we throw them a number. And so just to let you guys know some inspiration, if you ever feel that you don't have money in your life, well, there's a lot of people with a lot of money. You just have to know how to speak the language of money. There's money but everywhere. People with money just want to know one thing. How do I get my money back? And how are you going to double it more than the bank? That's that's really all it is. You know man. I, I gotta throw this. Can I plug something quick? Oh, are you are we plugging uh, uh, some stock stuff or what are we plugging? Oh, every Friday because I'm I'm kind of a nerd. I got some different interests. Every Friday I do a, a video called Trucker Money. We talk about investing, personal finance. Mm -hmm. You make all this money all week. What are you gonna do to keep it? Mm -hmm. uh, improve your life, passive income. Uh, mm -hmm. You really, I, I like that. I like to hear that from you. And you know, I wanted people to know that that think outside the box. Do what Alex does. Go looking for it. It's not going to come to you. You got to go out there and find it, man. And stop letting people tell you you can't or talk you out of it. They just don't want to see you do better than they're doing. Mm. Just go get it, man. It's human nature. It's human nature. You're going to be who you hang out with. You're going to be the, the sum total of your 10 closest friends. It's same with your income. You're going to make what your 10 closest friends make. Go out and find some new friends, you know, find somebody that's killing it and hang out with them. I love it. And, you know, honestly, because I hang out with a lot of rich people all the time, damn time, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, you just have to, you know, really be passionate about something. So just say DIY loves trucks. I mean, the man loves trucks to death. If you love trucks, too, he doesn't care if you're a billionaire, too. You know, oh, man. You know what I mean? And, and so, you know what? This is pretty funny. Um, my actual, and I hope he's not watching this, but, uh, I, I run with, uh, one of my neighbors, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we never talk business. Uh, I get a phone call and the next thing you know, he's like, what the hell do you know about, um, trucks, Alex? And I go, I talk about trucks uh, on YouTube. And he goes, really? That's interesting. He goes, because I'm a vice president of blah, 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 you know? trucking company and i go are you serious ha, that's we're funny. neighbors so my neighbor so the neighborhood i live in it's one of those neighborhoods where south florida it just sucks like that it's just yeah there's no job so if anyone can afford an 800 or a million dollar house or whatever then they have a decent job but guess the the whole story about this is guess why he likes me because we both enjoy health and fitness yeah he doesn't care what the hell I do. He doesn't care if I have money or not. He just right. cares that we enjoy running, you know? Right. Yeah. 
And so be passionate about something. And I guarantee you, there's a whole bunch of rich people in that passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. So at, at the end of the day, you know, we'll answer a couple more and then we'll let people go. What's this about? Oh, BOC three. So, okay. If you have your own authority, if you're a trucking company, um, you need to have uh, an address in every state where you can be served legal papers. So you need to get what's called the BOC three. This is part of you getting your own authority and you'll get a list of most likely law offices in every state that have agreed to receive papers on your behalf. They don't necessarily re represent you. You'd have to pay them for that, but it's just like, okay, if I'm from Wisconsin, if I got sued in Montana, somebody needs mm -hmm. to be able to serve me papers there. They can send it to this, you know, office and you have to, it's like, you have to have a registration. Uh, that's what that's all about. You can get Man. them some places. You can find them for free. I paid $30 one time, like 15 years ago to have it. And, and that's it. It's a really simple thing. No, I love it. I love it. So, you know, we're learning, man. See someone here, Joe Smith says, man, he's getting screwed up prime right now. So there you go. You know, and is this is great. I'm going to quick segue. Um, I have someone on the show tomorrow mm -hmm. that has been a company driver, has been a team driver and has been a lease driver for prime and still is. And tomorrow we're going to be putting all those numbers together to show you all these numbers. And nice. so, you know, nice. am I sponsored by prime? No, I bet you're not. Okay. <laughs> not okay. after tomorrow. You're not, <laughs> I will not be sponsored by prime disclaimer, 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 but it's good for people to know. So segue real quick. That's all it is for tomorrow's show. We're going to break down all of the numbers. I have all of the pay stubs, all the numbers for all that. So. I'll, I'll make a quick disclaimer too. Um, we're thinking about expanding someday and I'm going to steal every one of prime's drivers by offering them a deal twice as good as what they ha have now and uh, get them to make way more money and not like micromanage them and pick them apart on every little damn thing. There it is, baby. <laughs> there it is. Look at this. This is what, this is the reason why we do the damn show. Great show guys. Lots of fake coaches out there just looking for a sucker to give them a thumbs up want me to name a few of the truckers no 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 don't worry about that but <laughs> no. i will tell you this here's some here's some damn signs of a fake coach when they want money from you i don't care if they want money from you they are not passionate about what they're talking about now yeah. if they really have something to offer i mean let's be honest if you have diy straight up hook you up do your authority do your if does do your taxes show you how to fix your truck go out there and help you you might have to buy them lunch okay <laughs> i mean there's well, you know in all fairness the guy we did his airbag he bought me lunch. he bought me a nice lunch as as thank you very much uh daniel yeah. if you're watching um yeah i mean we don't want youtube wars we don't want any of that we don't no want any of that. that man we no. don't got time for any of that but at the end of the day you will know real quick what people are trying to do. Cause I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say it right here. If, if I haven't said it before, I would love to do this for a living DIY. Me too. This is great. Helping truckers doing fun things, having a conversation and, and, and surviving off of sponsors and such, as long as you believe in the sponsors. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, you know, was been blessed to be able to help some different people with different things here. And Sometimes you probably get it till you get an angry email or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you get that email and they're like, man, thanks. You know, you don't even know. Like mm -hmm. I got a, a, uh, one of my first videos I did about the suspension on these freight liners and their inherent flaw and in fixing it. The guy's like, dude, I spent the cost of a new truck trying to fix this. And nobody could tell me what the problem is. Mm -hmm. And he's like, like spent like $40,000 trying to fix this problem. And between me and an, and uh, the mechanic, we figured it out. We're like, let's let's do this and let's do that. And we made a, I made a video on it. And he's like, I spent the cost of a truck on trying to fix this. He's like, you don't even know how much you helped me. Mm. Of course, then the next comment is like, well, you didn't do this right. And, <laughs> but you know, I'm like, those emails just make your day. You know, oh, I love it's, it. No, that's 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 the thing that always makes my day. And you know, we'll answer one last one. And if you have more questions, go to DIY's channel, Dirty Broke. If you could put down the link, I have it in the uh in the pinned comment as well. But if we can, and I apologize if we didn't answer everyone else's question, uh, but let's give my man here a, a thumbs up. Tomorrow's my CDL test. Let the adventure 
begin. So we're we're all good luck. Uh, you can do it, man. Five people on here. <laughs> where you, you where, got this. <laughs> I I suck. Okay, I suck at driving forward, backwards, at everything. All right, you can do this, man. Yeah. If, if I could do the damn thing, you could definitely do it. So, tell you, you know, what, there's a lot of good questions in here. Um, I want to answer them. I know we don't want to take all your time. Why don't we, uh, you know, I not shamelessly promote, but subscribe to my channel. Check out the next live chat I do, and just hammer me with questions. I'll sit there till every one of them is answered. Oh well, yeah. The best thing I can is is do. I, I definitely want to. You know, we're really starting getting some good ones. So, you know, uh, I, I promise you that I'll, I'll answer everyone I can. I love that. I love that. You know, um, you know, see, look, look right there. You guys are subscribed to the wrong damn channel. You guys are over here <laughs> on no. my channel and I don't got time for nobody. It seems, you know, jump on DIY's channel. That's because you already, you already made it on YouTube. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, um, my goal, and I'll say this again, my goal is to get as many, freaking subscribers and blow up as big as I can. Why? So these damn big companies will actually listen to me when I complain and say, look, you guys suck. Listen to us. Cause if you don't, I will make a freaking video every single day saying how much I hate you. You know yeah. what I mean? And to go along with that, everybody watching, you know, we've all been in the truck stop. We've all complained. You know, it's part of what we do. We complain, we get angry, you know, and we should, a lot of things that happen, they suck and they shouldn't happen. But let's get about fixing it, you know, it's, it. in every aspect. I'm talking about like dispatch, this, that. The other thing, don't give these big companies your time. Don't go to work for it. It's, it's voluntary. You don't have to work for Swift. You don't have to work for Prime. There are tons of smaller companies out there that would love to have you and would appreciate you and treat you right. Mm -hmm. Just got to find them. You know, it's like, let's not participate anymore. We don't have to. I love that. I love that. And so before I let everybody go, uh, I'll give you uh, I'll give you the the last talk, the last hurrah. And uh, just tell people what you want to uh, tell people, brother. And I'll give you the screen right now. Yeah. I mean, join me. You know, that's are, are we going to solve the world's problems? No, not really. I hope to be able to provide everybody something somewhere, somehow that can uh, provide value to them. Uh, is it perfect? No, none of us are. But uh, you know, I'm I, I don't mind answering questions. Like email me, DIY semi at yahoo.com. If it takes me a little bit to get back to you, forgive me. We get a lot of emails and I drive just like you. I drive, you know, I got my 70 hours in a week. We got to sleep, we keep different schedules. I'm a reefer hauler, we keep odd hours. And uh, you know, I try. I I can't promise you the world, I can't promise to fix everything, but I can promise you I do my best every time. And, uh, that's, that's about it, you know, and definitely, you know, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this man's channel. If you just came over here from, from my channel, uh, Asian, my, he's out here to help people too. So, uh, yeah, you know, he's doing the best he can. And, and I know, you know, from talking to the man, he's, he's the real deal and he's doing everything he can too. uh, to be honest with you. So that's about it. Hey man, I love it. I love it. And you know, what we're going to do this week on the Asian, my show is, I just got a few more mother trucker hats made. So uh -huh. we're going to be giving out mother trucker hats. Nice. Um, Blue parrot uh, sent me some uh, headsets for you guys. Uh, we got like a B550 XT and we got B450 XT. And I'm going to let you guys know, honestly, uh, I'm just going to give these to you guys for free, but I'm going to keep it real guys. You know, Blue Parrot straight up is just giving me these because they're hoping that a lot of truckers watch it when I say, hey, guys, look, you know, Blue Parrot hooked us up. And that's what it really was. It was yep. just the email that they said, hey, guy, uh, hey, Asian Mai, we would like to just give you Blue Parrot headsets. So all I got to say is the day that I actually uh, do this giveaway it would be great if you guys actually watch the video. We get some views up on it. Why? Because then they're just going to give us more headsets and I'm just going to give them away more to you, you know, support the people <laughs> that support us, you know, you know they're supporting us, support them back, you know, and that's, the they thing, didn't even man. ask, they didn't even ask you for anything, did they? No, they were just like no. straight up. Like they were like, Alex, do you like blue parrot? I was like, dude, I've been using that 250 for like the last four years. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they were just like, Hey, we just want to send you a couple. So 
I'm just letting you guys know uh, when I do make that video, if you guys watch it, get more views. I'm trying to get like 10 every month, you know, and, and let's be honest. That's the way sponsors work. Uh, and I'm a disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Blue Parrot is not paying me. Uh, they just wanted to give me free headsets. OK, so I'm not getting rich over here. But if we watch the videos, they get popping on the ones where we, you know, give away the Blue Parrots. They're just going to give us more and then I could give them to you, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I, I think that's, you know, the, the big problem sometimes is everyone is just so worried that uh, the YouTuber is getting so rich, you know, and we're not, man. It's uh, not like that. It's not like that. <laughs> and even if it was, I tell you what, YouTube doesn't pay that much, especially for a small channel. Like if I broke down the amount of hours I put into this versus what I get paid, it's like five cents an hour you know you, you do it because you want to yeah you don't until you're a huge channel or you have sponsors or whatever you're not making all this money when, when so, you know the value is in smaller channels when you have somebody that's helping you and i'm not plugging myself and just saying uh, everybody even we got a new one in here the other trucker james best that's a channel check him out he's helping people cash is king is helping people dirty broke is sure as heck helping people support them they're not making nothing they're not making what you think i mean it's yeah it's, it's scary so you know, you know, the people that are, they're always asking you for, you know, buy my this, buy my that, you you know, it when you see it, you know, the real deal. No, I love it. I love it. So overall, you know, I'm just letting you guys know DIY is in the house. Uh, you guys better subscribe. If you guys don't know, let me show your channel just one last time for the people that don't know that I've uh, showed it 5,000 times on this video. <laughs> But I want you to grow, man. I love to see oh, people thank you. win. I love to see people succeed. And I hope you do on this because I will say it on here. You know a thousand times more than me about trucking. And you got no. 10 years more experience than me. And so I, I vouch for this man. I, I, well, I vouch for you. him. You know, Dirty Broke vouches for him. Cash is King vouches for him. You know, there's a lot of people on here. So at the end of the day, everyone... Stay blessed. I love you. Uh, tomorrow, if you are interested in knowing every damn uh, prime uh, uh, paycheck, lease, working teams, all that, then we'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. But besides that, I appreciate you for being on the show, brother. Thank Thanks you so for much. having me. Thank you so much. Not a problem, brother. And you stay on for a second. And uh, okay. everybody, peace out. Thanks for jumping on, James Best. Love you, bro. Peace. What's up, other truckers? You are now watching the 